Welcome back, everyone, to Tech Tuesday here on Northwest Digital News. And we have the star of our show sitting there on the left, Harry Brelsford. I'm Kevin Hunter here at the broadcast desk and Kyle Torgerson making all the tech happen. Well, we have a great show for you guys today. We're going to talk about how to become a master computer technology consultant. And for those of you uh, who haven't had a chance to uh, meet Harry and know a little bit about Harry, uh, this is, this is the master computer technology consultant here <laughs> sitting on our screen. Uh, he's written 20 plus books in the uh, technology sectors. In fact, we're going to be talking about uh, one of them here on the show today. 400 plus articles on tech and travels all around the United States to tech events everywhere. Um, there's not too many people who know more about what's happening in the world of technology than Harry Brelsford. And um, so, Harry, if you would, before we roll into this real quick, talk um, just briefly about SMB Nation, and you're going on a two decades now with SMB Nation, correct? Correct, correct. Yeah, it's 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 the goose that laid the golden egg, and now we're just keeping the goose alive. Or and, and other, I don't know if I go as far as cash cow, but I've I've been able to eke out a living, and it's uh, been an honor and a pleasure. But um, for those that aren't familiar, SMB Nation is a community. Um, every uh, every industry has a, a community and yep. we're an independent community where we fancy ourselves as being a little bit of an ombudsman up here in Seattle that every now and then we kind of poke Microsoft um, as, as they should be, right? Mm -hmm. So don't, don't get me wrong. I live in Seattle and Microsoft is, has been good to me and my family. Uh, it's been a wise choice to live in Seattle. But we, we, you know, there's just a time and a place to kind of poke the bear with some of the technology. And that's a lot of what my writing was, is people look to us for an authentic, uh, bona fide conversation that's not, you know, we're not a house organ, right? And, and, and so, um, and Microsoft respects that. And we're all professionals, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's all good. But that's what we are, 50,000 strong, a community of IT pros, geeks, computer guys, computer gals. Uh, the, the common term today is managed services provider, mm -hmm. MSP. Uh, but it's all the same person. And, well, speaking and, of Microsoft, and, Harry, we, we were at Microsoft with you not long ago. And yep. so despite your investigative work or the poking of Microsoft that you've done over the last uh, couple of decades, uh, they got a ton of respect for you over there, and that was quite obvious. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's well, worked out yeah, well. And, 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 and they've got a good story, right? Mm -hmm. they, 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 they do. And Kevin, it might go a little bit, you know, one of your niches being in the automobile industry, you know, you certainly have the right to be critical right. of the, the industry and their practices, mm -hmm. and it's, it's all good. So, so that's how we roll, uh, just as it sounds, SMB Nation, if people care to search and learn a little bit more about us. Well, let's talk about some of the bits and bytes of becoming that uh, computer technology consultant. Uh, yeah. Where, where do you want to start? Well, you know, what I wanted to do today, uh, Kevin, over the last year, um, six months, year that, that we've worked together, you know, we tend to inappropriately so default to geek speak. Mm -hmm. And each each week, it's it's always something, as they say, and <laughs> and it always will be. But I kind of want to for today, and and maybe for some shows in 2019. Let's talk business speak. Mm -hmm. Now, with business speak, understand that I'm coming at it from a technology partner point of view, an IT pro point of view. But some of the things I talk about in business speak, quite frankly, could be done by any professional services firm that's just trying to do a better job of managing their client relations. So, so let's knock out a, a, a quick list today, and uh, I'm looking over here, um, show up. So 80% of success is just showing up, according to Woody Allen, the famous uh, comedian. And uh, it's true, and, and, and I wanna give you a different spin on that, that I was in a startup in the mid-90s called 1-800-NETWORK, back when phone numbers meant something, and it mm -hmm. was Network Temporaries, owned by Mac Temps, and uh, home office in Boston. So it's been a lot of time in Boston, got to know Boston, and an uh, individual um, who was of, uh, a capable individual, but not necessarily a superstar, had taken some classes at an Ivy League college. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, well, you know, how'd you, how'd you do that? How, what's the story? 
And he said, man, just the, the first and foremost, live here. Just live in Boston, right? And, and amazing, you're, you're here. Mm-hmm. Amazing things will happen. You can go in and talk to admissions. So number one, show up. 80% of success is showing up. Number two, minimize mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, I have really taken this to, to heart in my career. You know, wake up. What wakes me up in the morning is, man. I hope I don't make a mistake today. And and the analogy would be uh, a pro athlete, right? We just had some playoff games on TV. Um, we have the Super Bowl coming up. And think about a pro athlete. A pro athlete is going to wake up and say, "I hope I don't get injured today." <laughs> mm-hmm. exactly. So if you can. Yeah, I mean, if you can minimize mistakes, you can make it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Number three, um, communication. Just had this talk with a Microsoft executive last Friday. I had an hour-long meeting with him. Been a while since we caught up. Turns out his son is a computer science major at Washington State University, Adam Pullman. And, and, and that program made sense. Uh, he, he could get in. You know, the, the University of Washington is very hard to get into. That's a fairly small program, computer science. So the guy goes to WSU. And I said, well, you know, he's going to do great. I mean, and, and I said, but, but talk to me. You know, is, is he well-spoken? Is he well-written? Is he a communicator? Because I said, in the world of computer science and DevOps and geeks, Boy, that is a secret to success, right, mm-hmm. if, if you're articulate. And the gentleman said, we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I said, fair enough. Um, number four, master a technical niche, riches and niches. And uh, I'll give you an example, again, that's going to translate for your audience, would be the, uh, the medical uh, health care compliance area, the, the act known as HIPAA, mm-hmm. um, HIPAA compliance. And a lot of geeks are involved in HIPAA compliance from, I, I think the status is called advisor role. There's a, there's a legal status. It's not my niche. Um, and, and then, of course, there would be management consultants and business consultants uh, concerned with HIPAA. So, so pick a niche. And, and Kevin, I don't know, have, have you had the great pleasure of bumping into some of the HIPAA in compliance conversations and in, in on this network with the, your other shows yes absolutely absolutely have. yeah yeah it's uh it's 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 real um savor the moment is my next uh piece of advice i think i'm up to number six working mm-hmm. for yourself savor the moment was on a call this morning not making this up and we're talking about you know the trade-offs of working for yourself being what we call a suit mm-hmm. <laughs> A corporate suit and and I said you know I said uh, I, I, I gotta tell you you know I can go biking uh, right now the days are shorter in the Pacific Northwest because it's winter the days are a little bit rainy I said I can go biking at 1 15 in the afternoon get on my bicycle go put in my hour hour a day keeps the cardiologist away and and I said you know to me that's a big part of my income Right, that 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 I'm savoring the moment, but take that time, take that you know, go out for that one fifteen p.m. walk or bike ride, and make it up on the flip side. Right? Who's to say you can't peek at email at seven p.m. or eight p.m. to catch it all up? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to talk about that for just a just yeah, a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Savoring ahead. the moment. Um, there's a this is actually advice that I hear from business consultants, coaches, mentors, like all over the all over the place. Uh, Savor the moment, and when you hit these little goals and milestones in your business, go out and have a party and celebrate it. Um, give yourself a pat on the bat, back and uh, be excited about uh, where this, but go celebrate it. Because, you know, yeah. in fact, just recently here on Northwest Digital News, we were talking about various milestones that we've hit, you know, here in our broadcast. And, you know, obviously I have worked in the online um, broadcasting business and with vlogging and doing tutorials and how to's, you know, for a good number of years. So all of that gave me an advantage. But we started this show from scratch in October, <laughs> October 8th, 2017, yeah. and hit 70 plus countries by the close of, you know, 2018. So pretty darn proud of that. Yeah. Yeah. No, you've built a, you built a real business and 
boy, howdy, I never met a party I didn't like, so I don't, watch it, Kevin, I don't need excuses to go celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to go, we'll, we'll have to set that up here sometime soon. All right. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you can take the boy out of Alaska, but you can't get the Alaska out of the boy, I'll just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> a couple other quick hitters, uh, bits and bites, um, grow with each opportunity. So, you know, two, two angles on that. One is um, I respect... And, and, and I know you do from having worked with uh, yourself and Kyle, mm-hmm. but I respect life learners, mm-hmm. right? I'm, I'm fired up by people who say, hey, I'm taking a community college class, mm-hmm. uh, middle, middle age, mid-career, and you could scratch your head and literally say, well, why waste your time, right? Why, well, so, you know, why do that on Tuesday and Thursday nights? Well, if, if anything, you always want to stay relevant in, in the business community, in the tech community. Um, but, you know, there is a thing called a life learner. And, and, and you see that, you know, Kevin, you see it every day up here, people who made their mark in early Microsoft. And, and these people will be rolling out of Amazon in a few years too. But you ever see these people when they hit, uh, someone who is the age of 50 and they go to law school. Mm-hmm. And, and you're kind of like, well, why, you know, why, why are you doing that, man? And they're like, well, I'm a life learner. You know, I'm flush. I got the money. I retired or whatever I do. And, but, you know, Kevin is the ROI there at the age of 50 to, to really make it as a big time lawyer. Probably not on Wall Street, mm-hmm. right? But mm-hmm. these people just have other motivations. So they're growing with opportunity. Uh, next one is uh, don't overbook yourself. Um, so, you know, it's, it's easy to do. You, it, it loosely translated. You sometimes have to say no to opportunities. You have to say no to a deadline. Um, cause the worst thing you can do is overbook yourself and do poor quality work. Mm-hmm. And boy, nothing gnaws at me more than that in my own career when you just got so much forward momentum and, uh, you, you overbook yourself, and no, nobody's happy. The client's not happy. I'm not happy. <laughs> and going back to one of your early points about communication, all of a sudden communication is breaking down, and a whole bunch of things are going sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And communication's your first uh, barometer as to how the relationship's going. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your finance and taxes? Goes without saying, or as I say, enough said. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, don't sweat the small stuff. Um, so it's a marriage. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you have to kind of really wonder that, well, do, you know, do I really, really want to fight that the uh, wall heater was left on overnight upstairs, mm-hmm. right? P- p- pick your battles. Do you really want to have that battle? Um, and, you know, what I see, Kevin, uh, and just in our industry, um, uh, a, a large backup and disaster recovery com- company, the founder, sold out to private equity, exited 12 months later, standard stuff in merger mm-hmm. and acquisitions. And there was a community movement to suggest basically the head of sales should become the CEO. And the um, they, he, he did not get the job. The private equity firm brought in their own hotshot, which is pretty common. Mm-hmm. And but the gentleman who was being kind of talked about in the community, um, no, in no names, of course, but Kevin, he sweats the small stuff. I just, when, when the name flew by, um, I just had to have a little chat with myself that, you know, I, I don't know if this guy's CEO material, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? That yep. CEOs have to kind of live at a higher level. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And, you know, sweating the, my, my dad used to use a uh, phrase really similar to this. And he said, don't major in the minors. And <laughs> I, I, I was making this point to a group of people that I was uh, speaking to in a major metropolitan area. And I looked up the top 10 players who had spent the most amount of time in the min- minor leagues in professional baseball. And I listed all of their names. And... You know, as I was, li- I said, you know, if you recognize any of these names, put your hand up, you know, as I went around the room. And so I kept listing the names and I get all the way to the bottom of the list and no na- no arms have come up. And I said, these are all players who have majored in the minors. This is what yeah. happens to your business. 
and in your organization when you major in the minors too. Nobody will ever know you. Your customers will never know you. You become a nobody after a while. Um, you got to play in the big leagues and get into things that really matter um, if you're going to become a, a, of substance in any way, shape, or form, or a meaningful business. So, like Dad said, yeah. don't major in the minors. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna uh, steal that and use it in a future book, but I'll I'll give your dad accreditation. There you go. <laughs> so uh, next up would be mentor others. Um, so I, I I believe in this. Uh, that, you know, it's the old send the elevator back down. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Kevin, you know, I, I, I don't know if I've been fortunate or lucky. The harder I work, the luckier I am. But, you know, I've made it part of my living theology, if you will, to mentor others. And, and you'd be surprised the conversations that will come up. I have a longtime employee that, that you're familiar with, Kevin and Kyle. And she, uh, you know, has expressed, um, and, and I get it, you know, that, that, that the day will come where she may exit the tech sector. Uh, mm -hmm. Technology is a burnout, right? It's, yep. it's hard. Yep. And, and, and I get it. You know, you get to run, and, and that's okay. And her husband's uh, in uh, the uh, a firefighter, uh, paramedic, kind of a combo guy. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, we've had very interesting talks about, well, should she get an online master's in healthcare administration? Uh, and, and that would allow her to align with the nature of her husband's career. And man, they could live anywhere. I mean, you, you could go to Juneau, Alaska, mm -hmm. right? You got a, you got a firefighter paramedic and you got a healthcare a master's in healthcare administration, which is logistics on steroids with all the compliance. Sure. Um, and, and so that's what I call mentoring. Mm -hmm. Right. There's two ways to approach that. And when I shared that with a family member on the other side of the aisle on a on a recent trip to Denver, she just couldn't believe I would even have a talk like that with an employee. Just she was old school. Right. Like, yep. oh, you know, I, I, I would never have that talk with my boss. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? But yeah, you know, you change do? is inevitable. Um. Two last things, uh, thrive and survive um, under any conditions. And so uh, this, this is kind of summarizing what we talked about earlier. Number one, I have a technical niche in demand. Number mm -hmm. two, strong communication skills. And, and number three, above average client uh, management skills. So a consultant, remember this is a service provider. It's a distinctly different career path in a line employee inside a large corporation. Mm -hmm. It's a client management and, you know, you better, you know, I, you, you better get excited and thrive and survive in these conditions or you shouldn't be a consultant, right? Which Agreed. is fine. Yeah. Go, go be a salary person. No problem. Mm -hmm. um, finally, and, and, and again, this is just business advice, but be in the top 10% of your peer group. And here's why I say that. On the traditional employee side, what's every headhunter say when they're, you know, promoting your cause? So, and headhunters still exist. That's still out there. So a headhunter takes you under his wing, and he's going to promote your cause to get you an exec position or a new position. And headhunters love to say that, well, you know, Harry's uh, in the top 10% of his professional peer group, mm -hmm. right? Because everybody wants to hire a top 10 percenter. Yep. Um, and, and, and then, uh, you know, the, the, the other thing I would say is what we, we found a correlation with the top 10% is that's about the size of the audience in an industry or that universe of people who will go to a conference, right? Mm -hmm. That 90% of the people, Kevin, you and I have done a few conferences, you know, I broadcast from them frequently. Yep. That audience on the floor by definition, in my humble opinion, is the top 10% of their peer group. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, there you, you mentioned, goes back to something you mentioned in the beginning, showing up and being a part of that whole thing. And, the, and they're, they're demonstrating. You can actually guess that uh, by the people that you run into there, that um, they very likely are top 10 percenters. And, you know, you just think in, in terms of people who are thinking, you know, about tech and maybe going to tech events, um, yeah, you're going to run into very likely that top 10% crowd. 
and then the follow-up advice I'd give to people, well then make sure you leave that event with a lot of new business cards, a lot of new contacts, a yeah. lot of new people to talk to, um, because all of that is going to, um, all that's going to add to what you're doing. There, there's a, I wanna go back to a point you made about um, thrive and survive under any conditions. I was um, at an event uh, probably 20 years ago, but this, this proved to be pretty impactful even from my own uh, business career. But there was a, a gentleman on the stage, there was, I don't know how many people in this Coliseum, maybe 10,000 people, it was a big event. And he was standing on the, on the stage and he was talking about challenges and things that we encounter in business and all these different hurdles we encounter in business. And he goes, you know, you can be that person that allows all those things to defeat you. And then, you know, you get on in years and one day, you know, you have your, grand, your grandson come and sit on your lap and you tell him, you know, grandson, grandpa would have done, and then you list all these different things you could have done uh, despite all the, you know, w but as a result of all these hurdles, but this happened and that happened and that happened, and so I wasn't able yeah. to do any of that stuff. And aren't you proud of your grandpa? And the whole, the whole audience bust up laughing. And his message <laughs> to people was, don't allow these things, don't allow these little setbacks. And, and you talk about mistakes and other things like that. Don't allow these things to, to set you back because you're human, you're, you're prone to make mistakes, you're prone to uh, have these things that will uh, stand in your way of your success, but if you believe enough in yourself and keep your head up, keep plowing forward, do a, a bunch of these things that Harry suggests in here today, um, your odds of uh, success in business uh, increase dramatically. <laughs> Excuse me, no, it's, it's absolutely true. That's why uh, I have, by the day, increasing respect for people who've started own and operated a business. I mean, I always have, mm -hmm. but for whatever reason, I've really reflected on that in the last year or so. Um, probably because I'm, I'm keeping my business relevant, my transformation and some pivots and so on. And, uh, when I'm on the phone with, uh, like-minded partners or customers or whatever, and they say, you know, their, their company's 17 years old or 10 years old, you know, the 10 year hurdle, um, they, they've gone through all of that, right? The mistakes and, and the workflow and all that. And there's no shortcut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a absolutely. So I have a closing question uh, here, Harry, before we leave. So after all these years and during all these years of working for yourself and creating your own opportunities, you ever have somebody come along, the naysayers or a family person who's, you know, thinks they're looking out for the best, of, you know, for your best. And you ever have anybody say, <clears throat> Harry, you just need to get a job. Oh, yeah, I'm married to that. And I mean that in a <laughs> kind way, because um, <clears throat> a lot of listeners are married to that. And it goes both ways. It's not gender specific. Right. But it, it goes both ways. And, and, and that's the world I live in. And let me tell you, when times are good. I, I mean, I'll just give it to you straight. When times are good, I, I don't have as much of that commentary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when any small business, you know, hits, uh, you know, we live and breathe on cash flow. So when when we hit one of those, um, then the uh, the peanut gallery tends to get a little more vocal. But at the end of the day, a better way to answer that would be, um, I have time, I control my own schedule and I have time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm the guy out here in rural Western Washington who doesn't necessarily have to commute into the city. So, you know, Kevin, I was, I, I, I was the guy that was there for the 4 PM matinee for the kids right. in elementary school versus the suits. You know, they, they can't get away from Seattle to get back to the Island fast enough to make a 4 PM. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's probably a more appropriate way to talk about the benefits of self-employment and being an entrepreneur. Well, you won't have an opportunity for those peaks if you aren't willing to have the stomach and the guts to get through those valleys, because they will be there. And, yep. and you will have those people around you, like the well-intentioned family members who would tell you, you just need to get a job. But you know what? Uh, if you believe in yourself, keep on keeping on. I can tell you from even my own personal experience, and obviously, Harry, there's been plenty of things that you've done as an entrepreneur that if you stopped everything today, you'll get you'll still get paid on for years to come. And you know the the same yeah. is true 
uh, in, in, you know, in my life, my career, and what I've created. And, you know, if I never turn the microphone on tomorrow and never did for the rest of my life, I have no idea how many years um, the content I've already created would continue to pay me because it, it has for many, many years. And so just tell people that you're creating investments in yourself and in your own career. Yep. Keep on keeping on and uh, get through those valleys. The peaks will make it all worth it when you get there. Well, that's well, going to be a wrap make here. That the final, yeah, the final word. Can't top that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's a wrap here on uh, Tech Tuesday here on Northwest Digital News. Uh, Harry Brailsford, Kevin Hunter, and Kyle Torgerson. Kyle, get us out of here. This concludes today's live programming on Northwest Digital News. Thanks for joining us for this special broadcast. Heard around the world in more than 70 countries on YouTube, Instagram, Patreon, Facebook, and Twitch TV. If you enjoyed a story or guest we had here on Northwest Digital News and would like to strut your stuff on the broadcast, email us today at wainfo2017 at gmail.com or call or text 360-545-3501. We're always interested in unique stories, topics, and guests to share with our worldwide audience. Before you go, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and comment on the live stream. And for those of you who'd like to financially support the broadcast, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash Northwest Digital News. We thank you 